Hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're listening to this podcast right here, it is episode 61 of the Temple Zone Podcast with your host, me, Amir Max, and that's all facts, a.k.a. Mr. Versatile, a.k.a. Young Steven. A. okay? Okay. All right. We're back. So I, was, I started on that intro, but it's all good because, you know, shaking off the rust a little bit. You know, when you skip a week, you know, you feel it. You know what I'm saying? It definitely makes a difference. So getting back into the groove is always cool, though, man. I might have messed you up with the lights there. No, 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 no. That, did, that <laughs> definitely did not. No, that did not have nothing to do with it, man. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. We all good in here. But, yo, my special guest today, y'all, um, the place I'm recording at, this, this is his spot here, yo. So yeah. um, to have him on Only Is Right. And on top of that, my man over here is a producer, engineer, etc. Like, man, is doing everything. Got No Thank Depth you. Collective. Obviously, we're going to dive into that and how you got started on that. But, yo, you're going in with it, bro. I got intuition in the building. And yo. spelled differently, obviously. It'll pop up right there. You know. <laughs> What's good, man? How's it going? How's it going, How's it going yo? Man? Nice to see you again, again. Ah, uh, yeah, man, we back in here, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but most of my guests, you know, it's been a while since we've seen you, know, since I've seen them. So, like, you yeah. know. Doing this, it's like, yeah, I saw you a couple weeks ago, and you know, we, yeah, you're always it's casual. Recording. Yeah, it's, if I saw you on the street, I'd be like, yo, what's up? Yeah, I'd be like, what's going on, man? You know, yeah, definitely be sipping on some ciders. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got another one, that yeah, these. We're not gonna plug them. No, nah, we're not gonna plug. We're not gonna plug until no. you start getting sponsorships from. Be, yeah, exactly. Unless they're gonna throw that bag. Yeah, we gonna spot the last one. I, I just like, hey, try it. You know, yeah, yeah. My, I definitely was very, uh, uh, definitely spot some pretty wild right into there. it. Yeah, but it was it was it was good. It was good. Nah. Um, yeah. but yeah, man, let's talk about Flower Blossoms. Uh, your EP that dropped. It's not EP. Uh, it's a that's fear, a full length project. Fear, yeah. fear Blossoms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was an EP. No, Fear Blossoms. Um, wow. Okay, right into it. I just released that. That's probably my work from the past eight or nine months. In that time, I like uh, have been through a lot of stuff with moving and job, and like I went to Austin to visit a friend over the summer, and that inspired me a lot to make a lot of stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, Hell yeah. so it's just a most recent collection of music. It is EP yeah. length, though. I wouldn't say it's it's in between what I would consider like a full full length project and mm-hmm. like a EP, you know. No, no, for sure, man. Um, I mean, you got a lot of tracks on there, so I'd call it an LP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, considering like, how yeah, the game but is like now. like twenty nine minutes. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got a point. That's there. like yeah, minor. Yeah. That's like on the light side of an album. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, like, that's definitely the time link definitely has something to do with it. So, yeah. But in terms of uh, the name Fear Blossoms, what made you go with the title for your project? I mean, as you as you said when when you announced it, you know, flower blossoms. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah. Uh, no, it's all good. That's an easy mistake. My mom was making that mistake on the phone. That's why I giggled a little bit when you said it when you messed up, and I was like, "Fair blossoms." But yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom, my mom uh, said that on the phone the other day when she was talking to me about it. She was like, "Why f- flower blossoms?" I was like, "Well, it's part of it." Um, mm-hmm. I like flowers a lot, and then I got the I, I wrote a not a bar, but I wrote a lyric that had that in it. It said like fear blossoms, turns to something, mm, whatever, whatever. A little bar. Um, yeah, which was about fear in the media and stuff like that, and just how I was feeling at the time. But I felt it also so not only did it re- re- like revolve around current events and how I was feeling at the time but it like just reminded me well yeah that was it just yeah. reminded me of how I was feeling at the time so that was a name I gave it halfway through that was a name I gave it uh, five months ago oh okay so gotcha. I started it probably nine months ago hell yeah and I gave it that name like yeah when I was feeling in my feelings <laughs> <laughs> yeah months ago now you know it's funny yeah fear blossoms definitely is a title where you're like like oh yeah we're gonna uh, hear some deep shit and i definitely like when i was listening to the project like the chill vibes i was definitely like hearing that for sure man and i definitely one thing i get from your beats i get you know i was i've always told you before i always get that that um that mad lib vibe you know I, I def- and i definitely like like that I, th- I think it's very cool it's very different and i and i don't see so many people uh doing that so in terms of like your influences who uh made you decide to go and take it with that sound yeah i mean fucking mad lib was one of the first people to get me into hip-hop like being from la and having lots of friends that listen to different types of music than me you know i was raised on like I don't know all sorts of stuff. My dad, my dad even like hip hop too. Mm-hmm. He used to break dance in the in the in the eighties and nineties and shit. Hell but yeah, like, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, but uh, 
he wasn't too into hip hop when he was introducing me to music though. So he didn't introduce me to that stuff. And then I didn't get into it until high school. I heard uh, Quasimodo, which is mm-hmm. one of, uh, uh, I forget what the, there's the, there's, he's got a couple, f- there's two full length projects. I think there's, there's way more, but there's two yeah. like fully published, fully released two length projects under Quasimodo that are, that is, do you know who Quasimodo is? The Quasi- name sounds familiar. I think Quasimodo you were telling me about is Madlib. Okay, yeah. It's one of Mad Lib's songs. Oh, all right, all right. So yeah, yeah. Quasimodo got me into hip hop, which means Mad, Li- Mad Lib got mm, me into hip hop. Okay, yeah. Quasimodo. I was like, Quasimodo was like, wow, I was going to ask you. Yeah. That. I was going to let you And they it. did all the artwork with Stone's Throw and all that shit. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, I'm pretty sure Dilla was involved at some point before his death, too, because the first Quasimodo project started to appear around then, I think. And it might have mm. been inspired after Dilla's death, honestly. And that gets me to a next source of inspiration is Dilla. But I feel like those are very stereotypical answers, you know, to that question. Like, I could say Raj G, I could say Dilla, I could see yeah. Mad Lib, you know. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. I could see anybody from that crew, though, mm-hmm. you know. But I would say, to wrap up the question, modern modern day influences. Yeah, uh, in terms of today, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to name more off-the-grid people that, you know, might actually, you know, benefit from this, uh, hearing this, you know, is Navy Blue. Mm-hmm. Uh Rapper, I'm pretty sure rapper producer, but rapper, his latest project, I don't know how to say it. I'll, I won't understand how to say it. It's like it's Ada, it's Ada, it's Ada Rin. Yeah, the title <laughs> track or the intro track is called 20. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. And then the whole project is like beautiful beats mixed with like instrumentals and skittish type things and like all Hell sorts yeah. of stuff. And there's uh, Mike in all caps who's like popularized for working with earl sweatshirt hmm. that type of stuff and that's a little bit you start to get a little bit more mainstream when you talk about odd future and tyler and all of them but oh like, yeah no but still but yeah but i mean i i definitely was you know all those artists you mentioned i definitely see that vibe in your music man it's definitely it's something i've been haven't been hearing that much around uh just the area and i mean and that's and i guess that makes sense because uh you're, you're from cali yeah what part of cali are you from i'm from los angeles um, Ooh, good old LA, I'm from. Man. I'm to be more specific. I'm from. I was born in Torrance. I'm from the beach. I'm from Hermosa, Redondo, Torrance. Yeah, Hell that yeah, whole man. that whole neighborhood. Those kind of areas touch each other. Some are a little bit nicer than others, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, what was I going to say, real quick? Oh yeah, that influence. Yeah, definitely. When I brought it out here for my own stuff struck me as only relating to like a couple people and i still only relate to a few people that are based out here like the, i want to give them a shout out you know the whole nightworks crew mm-hmm. uh yeah. it's like rosin dj manipulator whole bunch of guys that i'm forgetting lightfoot beats uh loman type mm-hmm. beats who owns the studio over there in somerville uh whole bunch of them um Hell all yeah. those guys influenced me and you know Rem- reminisce of that style out here but i do see a lot of people in la where i'm from doing that type of style too i don't know i was, trying to, loop, I was no. trying to loop in style to where i'm from no 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 no, no. <laughs> word man no, that's dope man. i mean i i mean no matter you know we have the internet we were connected all the time so we we know what Correct. everyone's doing so in terms of like where you're from like it, you know you can be inspired to make whatever um yeah. but you know still where you're from it you know brings a part of your identity and oh, yeah. in terms of this podcast man i don't think i've had uh too many guests on who weren't from the new england area so you're definitely in the right. minority for that if i'm, I'm trying to think about if i've had any other guests who are outside new england who are yeah. on here but i'm super not from here yeah 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 you know I mean? yeah, all, <laughs> yeah all the way out, the way, out west man i need to i need to make it out to cali sometime man i've been i've been telling myself to make it out there it's but, great for a yeah. lot of things you know, yeah, it's people gonna swear get, like as like a musician, you got to go out there. To oh, I mean, do your thing, at yeah. least at least something. And it it's not only L.A. Mm-hmm. too. There are lots of great parts of Northern California too. Mm-hmm. And San Francisco has a great scene, and Oregon. Even if you talk about leaving Cali up the coast, you know, yeah, um, Oregon and uh, Seattle to Washington, all those places have a different scene than out here. You know, but L.A. It, as a musician, you have to go at L.A. Even if you're not like doing anything super important you know mm-hmm. and i'm using air quotes right now yeah. oh my bad <laughs> uh yeah i just dropped my phone too but <laughs> even if you're not doing something thanks man if you're not doing something like a tour or like even a show you know but as a musician just to go there and witness some shows and mm-hmm. talk to people i'm sure you can get into some studio make some connection yeah. out there you know mm-hmm. there are so many people there are so many cheap studios out there and 
and, and stuff too. Yeah. You know? If you look hard enough, you know, because it's hard to come across certain people who got them good deals and okay. you got the right equipment to get what you need to do. So, you know, you definitely have to do some networking to, to find the, to those people because obviously yeah. you can go online and look up a studio. Yeah. But Don't throw away all your money. But <laughs> yeah, it's going to cost go to LA, Go to LA to say what's up to people and, you know, try to find stuff that you're into blossoming there because LA is a great place to fucking... Oh, excuse me. No, I not curse on oh, your we can cu- Oh, we can definitely curse. Oh, yeah. Word. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Curse uh, all you want, man. Yeah. Because <laughs> I do that on mine, so I'm just so used to talking. Oh, uh, no. This is what we can. You know what's funny? <laughs> Depending on certain guests I have, like, they will just, like, not curse. And then I'll realize, like, I, 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 well, I'm Lizzo, cursing. Well, Lizzo yeah. doesn't curse. <laughs> Lizzo doesn't curse, yeah. But I understand because he's got, you know, he's got. Uh, Teaching. Yeah, he's teacher. So I understand that for and sure. Being, yeah. Trying to demonstrate differently yeah that was, that was the only time i had to censor an episode it's just words <laughs> yeah. yeah oh no that that was that was a yeah. good time though yeah. too i, I was yeah, looking shout to little four man yeah. first but by the way man yeah, yeah. that was a good episode that i was, was a great inspi- episode. i was very inspired i left that episode and made a beat right after and was so inspired i was like wow that was yeah. positive <laughs> positive influence yeah uh definitely yeah. yeah and this music's definitely got that positive vibe too man yeah. definitely definitely y'all should collab on something man i mean <laughs> I, mean, I know what talking man. about yeah we'll make it happen yeah, yeah, yeah no, definitely I mean, i've been talking to him about collabing too yeah. so we'll definitely make something popping for yeah. sure um yo man i want to ask you about this the style that you have man i've definitely mentioned it to you before your style yeah. is not it's it sounds dope yeah it's got it's so chill yeah one thing i notice about it though it's almost like you're not quantizing everything all the way, and that leaves and it makes the beats feel oh, like I mean, human. Or, I mean, that's it, the whole there's, thing. There's man. a vibe to it, but like, do you think like there's there's something to music being a little imperfect? Do you think oh, there's yeah. something to that? Man, that's the key. That's jazz, man. That's mm-hmm. soul. That's like that's what puts yeah. energy in some types of music. Now, I'm not saying I don't like quantized type music. Of like, course not. No, I mean? no, no, no. I can get I can get real into especially if I'm like you know partying or whatever i can get real into trap i can get real mm-hmm. into you know other heavy main whatever it is other yeah. heavy mainstream stuff that's like super quantized but like in my eyes like the true true magic moments in music sometimes come from imperfection you know yeah so whether that's timing or pitch or whatever i try to use very little and mm-hmm. something that affects that type of sound too is i try to use very little pitch like modulation yeah. or pitch editing or whatever i try to use very little like heavy effects you know unless that's what i'm going for unless i'm like yeah this is supposed to be fucked up this yeah. is supposed to sound wild <laughs> mm-hmm. or a process or if i'm working with somebody that wants like a, that process that like radio radio ready sound, yeah radio you ready know so, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And, that, uh, and that was the thing i was mentioning yeah. too it's like i bring it up because i feel like and nowadays you feel like yeah in terms of like radio stuff or just anything of that nature everything has to be so perfect and then when you see certain artists perform oh, yeah. live you're like wow that sounds Man, if you have, really different yeah <laughs> if you have a tiny little bit of compression off yeah if, for a radio track you know what i mean and i'm not saying everybody's gonna reject like that type of thing but e- even if there's like something they don't like about like the slightest thing in your mixing or editing or whatever like you mm-hmm. know what i mean that's not suddenly not radio ready and sometimes that has to do with time True. That's why I started yeah. on a tangent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's like I've I've been told so I've been told by blogs and by labels and by whatever that my style, specifically because of what you just brought up to timing, whether whether it's timing or whether it's that slightly imperfect style, mm-hmm. has it's me. like been valued more yeah. so nowadays. Well, no, but well, I think in some communities, but I feel I've been valued less for it before, mm. many times. You feel like you're taking too big of a risk doing it, or do you feel like no? No, because yeah. my main venture for making money is mm. mixing and recording and running a studio space. Yeah, it's and hard to make money off of beats. So. Yeah. So, the, yeah. I mean, <laughs> nowadays, really yeah. nowadays, like, I like I don't know anybody who's doing it anymore, but, like, people used to sell beats for lots of money. Even B-Stars was more popping back in the day. Mm-hmm. But now you just really got to, you know, put stuff out. But. That's a whole different thing. Oh, yeah. That's a whole different topic. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say what you about to say there. Was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, yeah. <laughs> we were going a different direction the there. Of, yeah. Uh, selling beats and everything. Yeah, no, on top of that, too, it's just like so many people get free beats and like will upload it everywhere. But oh, yeah. like if that song blows up, <laughs> like that producer going to be knocking on your door if you have a contact. Oh, yeah. Going to be like, yo, fam, like. Oh, yeah. 
I, I gotta get something. The pie. Yeah, let me get something out of that. So like, I always let like let artists know that like if you're if you're putting out a song and you like want it or expect it to blow up, yeah. And like you don't have connections with the so, producers. So you what you asked me is, is what I was worried about. Yeah. If I was worried about that, no, because mm-hmm. when I am worried about that, when I am concerned with making songs again, perfect, quantized, yeah, compressed, sounding tight as fuck, you know, bass, everything's exactly in tune and mm-hmm. in line, um, ready, ready. That's when I'm working with someone. Hmm. That's when I'm working with a client yeah. that wants it to sound that way. I n- almost never do that with my own music again because of the style of it. You know? Yeah, not for sure, not definitely. Yeah. Have you ever? Uh, <laughs> uh, have you ever had someone on in your song? And you're just like, oh, this is. Uh, he's not. He or she's not killing it. This one. How do I tell them? Like, <laughs> well, what do you do in that situation? Situation. Is man? it their song? It's your like, beat. Is it it's your client? beat. It's is your beat. beat. It's your beat. But are they a client? Uh, Are they paying me money for the beat? And yes, the beat they're, they're paying your money there. Yeah. I'm shutting my mouth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna thing. be like, I'm gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> loud and clear. Yeah. You got it for the for the for the listeners that aren't watching the video. I just gave a thumbs up yeah. and nodded my head, <laughs> pretended like I was giving the okay to yeah. someone who's not sounding mm, sounding yeah. not sounding good. That's now, always such a weird situation, though, man. Yeah. For like just engineers or like beat makers, it's just it like, depends. It's a, again another question I would ask in this hypothetical scenario yeah. is: Are <laughs> they are they open to criticism? Are they open to advice and criticism? Um. Or is it someone who's they're like, not. who's okay, they're okay, not. yeah. I'm not saying anything. I'm getting it done. I'm just mm-hmm. gonna be like, <laughs> and I respect that. A lot of times yeah. I respect that. A lot of times I'm like, yo, you are doing something that obviously you like to do. So go for it. Let's yeah. keep it that way. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm gonna help you do that, and then. But I, a lot of times I won't work with people like that again. Yeah, it's it's not gonna continue for a and while, and it's not yeah. personal. It's just like if I don't want to listen to the music you're making. And I have to listen to it a lot, like over and over yeah, and over. Again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Bow out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you know, like, money can't control everything. Sometimes, like, mm-hmm. if you're not vibing with someone's sound, I think that's you just gotta point. you just gotta move on from. Yeah, it. yeah. The point there is to make there too, because that's more important to me. What you just said is that sometimes the craft is more important than money. Sometimes it's just like, mm-hmm. hey, you do your own thing. But yeah. No, I hear you, man. It's, it's 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 important to make the right sound, and I don't think, yeah, you know, I I can't I couldn't go through a four hour session to listen to one song I despised. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. You know, <laughs> that's why I'm not an engineer. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I mean, sometimes there's been times before where it. there's been times before where I've been like, hey, let's switch it up. Let's try something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Let's I've been in a session with my engineer. We recorded <laughs> a song, and we both agreed, like, yeah, we just say, <laughs> but both agreed. We, we both, you agreed both like, nah, this is trash. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't say it was trash. But we're like, this needs some rearranging. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah, I've definitely so, done the this is trash part with my real homies that I recorded. No, we didn't say this is trash. If it's not a client and I'm recording and I don't like it, again, I should counter that point that I just made with this, that if it's not a client, if it's a friend and it's not my song even, but it's my beat or something and we're recording on it, even if they're paying me and it's a good friend, I'll be like, hey, man, let's try something else. Let's yeah. do something else. I'm like, this isn't where I'll be like, this isn't working. Yeah, you know? it, it, it's it's tough, man. And I've always yeah. mentioned on this podcast that artists are sensitive, man. And, and when it comes to that being the case that's it's, important it's hard, it's hard to give criticism because you, you want to be honest with people you're not trying to hurt nobody's feelings but another thing i will say to that you got to give criticism to people in the right way because you can there's obviously a wrong way to do it's it. it's got to be constructive it's got to be constructive constructive criticism it's very important you can't be like yo you suck yeah that's <laughs> trash stop making music don't do that <laughs> this isn't for you but like, again if it's a real homie <laughs> Yo, that was trash, bro. <laughs> you need to try again. Yeah, <laughs> it's gotta be a homie, yeah. like someone that you know, like oh, that, that you been, know is not gonna turn around and like fucking stab you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's not gonna be like, yo, what did you just say? Exactly, yeah, someone that yeah. you, you know has their your, your best in, their their best interest in them. Uh, but yeah, man, that's just uh, it's a it's a situation that artists go through. Um, I don't know if I've had too many people tell me my music's trash before. Has anyone told you, like, yo, this is trash or something you made? Oh, yeah. I'll, I've had good homies. Yeah. I've had, well, again, this comes back to homies, friends versus, you know, yeah. randos, you know? <laughs> I have a friend, uh, I have a friend, 
named Kyle, who I'm going to shout out because he used to have me on his radio show, mm-hmm. and we used to that was on public radio, and uh, we which was still dope, and we Kyle, used to uh, Kyle's a good guy. I won't say Kyle's last name or anything, but Kyle has not inclined to be a musician always but kyle has helped me with a lot of my music Mm -hmm. and kyle before i've told him hey don't let loose like don't hold anything back i need your honest opinion on my music always and since i told him that there have been at least five or six times where i've showed kyle something and this is in the past like year year and a half where i've showed kyle something he's been like nope (laughs) like i'm just not hearing it man and he i like that because he's not a yes man you know what i mean and i don't always need that judgment on my own music but if i want some if i want some you know Mm -hmm. but the the most important thing kyle says to me too so uh, a great constructive criticism like we were just saying yeah is like like, that's not you he's told me like about Mm. my music before he's been like that's not you that's Mm. like you know what i mean yeah that's good words yeah but if it's accurate you know I I i guess it's all with it, this is all very uh, not subjective. I don't know. I don't know what the right word. I to guess use you could say that. Yeah, it, it, it all like, varies depending on who you have around you. The, again, or mm-hmm. so that's scenario. But like song, I think subject matter too. It all depends on. Yeah, my English skills are not very. No, no, no. I I get the gist of what you're saying, man. I feel it. I feel it. I know all the yeah. the the other artists uh, and producers out there definitely see where you're coming from. They see how we feel about this. You know what I'm saying? Correct. So, yeah, I, I definitely uh, I see where you're coming from, man. Um, I want to ask you about um, you know, obviously you got your your sound. Uh, there's a vibe that you obviously um cater to the most. Yeah. But. You know, obviously producers, there's producers out here who make tight beats. And there's a lot of people that have problems with artists who use tight beats. Do you do you, do you see any issue with that, that going on? Because it's very prevalent that's a good, nowadays. That's, a good that's question. everywhere. That's a good question, man. I mean, it's been everywhere for a little while, too, since I started really making music. Yeah. That's been a thing. Um, mm-hmm. It's a great way to get noticed. It's a great way to like promote your name. Yeah. But there's a certain point where it's like excessive. I think with anything, I mean like not using moderation. I, I don't think that applies, but like there's a point with anything where it gets to be excessive. Like some things just don't fit into type beats and they get mm. lopped into that. Um, I don't know. Hey, I, nobody's made an intuition type beat, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so a, a point I would like, so from my personal point of view at this moment is I don't care too much. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think it really affects like, I think, I think it's actually can be a good thing. It's, it's something for people to practice rapping on. It's yeah. Something Producers can be familiar reference. with yeah, making like the reference, especially a type beat tutorial. Yeah. Love that shit. I used mm-hmm. to, I learned a lot from that stuff, but, um, yeah. I might say differently if I was like a producer that gets copied a lot, like Metro type beats. Oh yeah, yeah Metro. Or like yeah. J Cole, or like a rapper that gets DJ copied a lot. DJ Mustard, DJ Mustard. Yeah, oh oh okay. yeah. I mean, not, definitely. Not that, I'm not a big fan, but like that West Coast sound is definitely that shit's yeah. huge. Mm-hmm. Or like, yeah. or like even like oh, one that of the most one of the most pop <laughs> one of the well one of the most speaking of ninety BPM ish one of the most popular <laughs> ish, yeah. around that area. Yeah. yeah, one of the most popular type beats that I get hit with is like J Cole. Type beats. That's usually pretty chill. Or <laughs> usually pretty chill. But it's sometimes... It, okay, so this is, comes into the question with, like, if I was one of those people that was getting type beats made after, like, yeah. how does it affect saturation of your music? I don't know. Mm. I yeah, don't know. I don't think it really... The artists, I don't think it has any effect for them. I mean, yeah. I, I honestly think at the end of the day, people d- say type beats just because, like... Oh, like, oh, uh, I love J. Cole. I would love to sound like J. Cole. Yeah. It's the type of beat he would use to me use it. You know what I mean? So I just don't like that phrase. I don't like yeah. narrowing my own music sometimes, which sounds like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that sounds, comes off, but, like, <laughs> I... <laughs> nah, get it off. Like, it, off. it don't matter. Like, don't narrow me. Don't categorize what I do. My yeah. art. My <laughs> art is above that. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, all uh, artists, yeah. All, yeah, most <laughs> artists don't want to be categorized into yeah. one thing. We all feel like... Oh, but, we're, we're, yeah, we're more than this. We're, we're no genre. <laughs> yeah. Would you say it's a type beat if I make a beat and then put a rapper acapella over it? Would you say that's that artist type beat? For example, my most recent one on my yeah, Instagram, I think I made like a, a beat and then I put an Earl Sweatshirt acapella over it. Is that now an Earl Sweatshirt type beat? I, I, Even if I don't call it that. Uh, I wouldn't say so. I, I don't think so. I just you just you, you made a remix to a uh, Earl Sweatshirt song. Yeah, that's what I called it. Yeah, a remix. I called it a remix. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it's not. It uses nothing but his acapella. 
Mm. You know yeah, what I mean? So. And I made it in the style of that type of music. Mm-hmm. But I haven't called it a type beat. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a type beat because it's not instrumental. I mean, you put the lyrics yeah, over it. So. That's just what I think. But I think I think they can be great. I've heard some great type beats. So I oh, I mean, I, I looked. I, I, I looked through a ton of type beats, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I listened to a bunch of instrumentals, man. Just because you know, when I'm searching for stuff, it's good to just like, just practice, or like if yeah. I'm trying to like, you know, just write. if you want something empty to practice the the flow over. Exactly. Or yeah. So yeah. it helps out with that for sure. But like I was saying earlier on the episode, in terms of like, you know, if you got a song that you're trying to push. You know, make sure you make sure you communicate with your producers, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make sure you communicate. Yeah. It's, it's really important because everybody, you know, like you know, everybody needs to be involved with, with the music. You know. I, I think that's a great. I think yeah. that's a great thing to promote. You know, yeah. say like, hey, uh, do you like what we're making right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's there for real, man. <laughs> and on top of that too, it's just like you know, I just feel like artists we forget to mention you know the guy who recorded it the guy who produced it you know oh, yeah. yeah you want to mention everybody you know i, I oh, definitely yeah. think that's it's important to you know get the word out hey there. this is comes what? into the broader topic of supporting artists but that's a whole different tangent yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> support artists is all, yeah that and that's definitely something that we have uh, reiterated many times on this platform here man just because you know it's obviously very important to support the artists man you know like <laughs> yeah like it's it's not too many ways to uh to to uh to support and i mean Oh, uh, for, for that's you know paying for it. like you can do it for free. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know you don't have to pay. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. People yeah, uh, lots of easy ways nowadays to support an artist for free. Wait, what was that? Lots of ways, lots of easy ways nowadays for people to support an artist for free. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Isn't I mean, that what you just said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I figured that's what you. Yeah, I, I was trying. To, I was trying to catch what you just said. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> 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 no, nah, no, nah, that's definitely the gist of it, man. Support your local artists, y'all. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, We'll put it out there for that, man. Yeah. Um, in terms of what you got going on next, man, what's what's uh what's up next for you? I know you got some events lined up. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm, I was gonna say I'm ready for this question because I know <laughs> there's been a lot of tangents. Uh, <laughs> tangents uh, are what makes podcasts great. Oh yeah, ask me. oh yeah, absolutely. It's good, to, it's good to break off the question, absolutely. man. We, no structure. Yeah, but what I got coming up? Well, just released on March first. I don't know what day today is. Today is fourth. Uh. March 1st, so a few days ago, I released uh, Fear Blossoms, my latest collection of music. I still we- find it so funny I call it Flower Blossoms. I, I think I had a typo on my phone. And you wear that hat with flowers on it. What the hell? Easy mistake. <laughs> I love flowers. That's yeah. why it's called that. So yeah. you're good. We named uh, the episode Flowers. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> we named the episode Flowers. Yeah. Uh, that's no, no, great, no. man. No, no, no. Uh, City, though. My bad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. So, uh, yeah, it's like a collection of work of the past nine months. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deep and meaningful to me in ways that like music hasn't been before. It but really is done for real, man. Like I listened to, it, I was like, man, this is. I feel this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For real, like I, I try. Like, dope, man. Even though some of the words on some of the lyrics are old, and like some stuff is like, you know, I don't know, some stuff I got tired of. You know, it's really important to me. So mm-hmm. check that out. That's on Bandcamp right now for purchase. When will it be on all streaming platforms? I know you. I think like that. today or tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as soon I, as it I is. Post, yeah. I, I posted it late, but it's going to be on Spotify, mm-hmm. Apple Music, Google Play, Deezer, Tidal. I'll share that around for you. I got All you. that shit. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. It's, I mean, I never think it's my best work, you know, but it, it really is each time. And looking back, like before the next project drops, I'm always like, damn, that stuff I just made is so good. Uh, you know, yeah, it's important. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It's important to reflect. So that okay, March first, Fear Blossoms. I'm trying to get my mind in order because I got a really important thing that <laughs> yeah. you mentioned, like shows coming out. Yeah, no, definitely get that uh, out there. Definitely, got a couple definitely. shows like lined up, show type things. But the most important, the and the the most meaningful, and the most incorporated by far is uh, on March 14th. It's now 8 to 11 p.m. Harvard Square, Church Street, uh, where the old Starbucks was at. Okay, we're holding an event called Fitting the Grid. Hell yeah. Uh, which is me and Roundtable Collective, or Roundtable Collective, including me, um, which is uh, an artist called Edom Lipton who painted this beautiful mural over here. He's my good friend. Uh, Edom, there's Dan Carey, there's Josh Hilty, there's uh, Mystery Bavik, there's uh, Juliet. <sighs> Fuck, I forget Juliet's last name. There's a, girl na- there's a person named Zoe. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people Hell yeah. we got involved right now, but like, Essentially, all walks of life, all walks of artistry, photographers, painters, um, 
a lot of visual art, but then I bring the music. My friend Jesse Eliza is bringing the music. My friend Josh Hilty, who's a painter as well, is also bringing music. He goes by Ash Magash mm-hmm. for music. He's featured on a That's couple a cool of my name. tracks before. <laughs> it's a cool name. He's a great artist, man. He's a beautiful artist. Y'all check out Ash Magash. O S H M A G O S H. Hope you're spelling that right. <laughs> On Spotify, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ash my gosh, I <laughs> hope I'm spelling it right. You'll find it. Jesse Eliza is easier to spell, easy to find. Uh, you can find all of these names because they're all featured in my work mm-hmm. and they're all posted on my Instagram and everything. So event, March 14th, 8 to 11 p.m., Harvard Square, Church Street. It's called Fitting the Grid. It's an art showcase. And then my website is nodepthcollective.com. You can find out my Instagram, my Bandcamp, my Spotify, my podcast, my radio everything from all day. everything from the website and i post updates on instagram usually hell yeah it's my main platform for updates um but yeah the most important show i'm just gonna keep saying march 14th fit march 14th pop up pop up all yeah. right gonna yeah. be there all right it's gonna be lit i'm gonna yeah. pull up all right march 14th yeah march 14th? hell yeah man, man you gotta be there we were yeah. we were putting up times that said six to nine mm-hmm. i shouldn't have even said that because now it's eight to eleven p.m yeah. March 14th, mark your calendars. Good, good turn up time. It's yeah, going to be a good time. Good turn up time um, for sure. Music, art, prints, everything. That's the most important. I'm not going to mention any of the other stuff right now. Hell I got yeah, a podcast, man. radio, all that all that stuff's on the website. You be doing a lot, bro. Where do you like <laughs> Where do you have the time for all this stuff, man? I don't, man. <laughs> I, I I work. I work a job. I don't <laughs> yeah. I work a day job. That's why I don't sleep, man. I work a day job. People ask me, why are you always tired all the time? Or why do you look high all the time? It's like, because sometimes I'm stone, bro. And sometimes I'm just <laughs> a fucking, little bit of both. <laughs> like not sleeping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I work a job. I help watch kids. I help uh, work at a restaurant. I help do a lot of stuff. And then I do this, of course. And like Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. music and art and all that. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have the time. I I make time for the stuff I like to do. You know, it should be called No Sleep Collective. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> man. Oh snap, oh, man! man. <laughs> that name I've used for a long time. That's why I've stuck with it too. But I like it a lot because I don't know, it just means something to me. Mm-hmm. No but, Depth uh, Collective is a dope title. Definitely That's No Sleep. Fire, yeah. <laughs> Initially, it meant like there's no depth that cannot reach be reached by what i'm working on you know or whatever it's, like, it's like basically saying lost. the sky's the limit yeah right? but reversed exactly but reversed, yeah hey man you, got you, you, man. you, man. you got it man <laughs> come on that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, that's dope that's fine that's like honestly the open the, your third eye I used y'all. To say <laughs> that. yeah <laughs> i'm being stupid yeah no nah, but that's definitely a dope title man i always thought Thanks, that man. got a nice ring off the tongue no depth you know collective. should yeah. we spell that i'm gonna spell it yeah spell it out for the people man yeah if they're listening to audio d-e-p-t-h C O L L E C T I V E. No depth collective. No spaces on anything. No depth collective. Instagram. No depth collective. Dot com. Follow that. Follow that. All right. Make yeah. sure you make that happen. Anything uh, else you want to plug in terms of more music on the way? You're gonna sit on this for a while. Um, I got some. I got some singles coming out. I got um some singles coming out with my boy. Uh, I'm gonna say his artist name. I always want to call him his nickname, but his artist name is Clyde Andromeda, who he hasn't credited me official credited me officially mm-hmm. yet. But I came up with that name when we recorded the project <laughs> a little Put while ago. Just letting know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just letting everybody know yeah. if he tries to say he came up with that shit later. I came up with that, but like, Clyde oh, Andromeda. <laughs> Clyde's his real first name though. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Clyde Andromeda. That's C L Y D space A N D. R M D A. It's also spelled I'll, wrong. I'll stand away. Spelled I'll stand away from it. Spelled wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll see you spell it wrong. I was like, I'm gonna let him go. I'm doing well, this. I, it's it. not spelled correctly, so I was spelling it yeah, incorrectly yeah. on purpose for everybody mm-hmm. listening who heard that. Mm-hmm. Clyde Andromeda, no E, and then missing letters in Andromeda. I'm not gonna go through that again. But I've got a couple songs out with him. He's got a project called The Last Record Spinner. He's got. I think I'm featured on that one. He's got a project. Um, that just came out too. You can look him up on SoundCloud, all that, mm-hmm. YouTube. He's got a couple of music videos coming out. That's the homie. Hell yeah. So I want to plug that. I've got stuff coming out with him. Hopefully, hopefully soon. Um, and then he hopped on that beat. I might have showed it to you. you. Did. I, don't I know. think it was you real did. 90s. Yeah, you definitely did because the name sounds familiar. It was so. the beat I used in the post about the album listening thing that I tried to throw. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Hell yeah. No, nah, it was off subject. Yeah, nah, it sounded dope though, man. If dope. I had to plug anything else, it would be 
Yeah. I know you're doing so much, man. That's why I had to ask again. Like, is yeah, there anything else so you want to play? I know you got a ton of stuff out there's there. There's one or man. two more things. Okay, <laughs> there's a dude named Brain Orchestra mm-hmm. who I've been talking to a little bit. Uh, I sent him some artwork a little bit ago. Said he might use it to press over a project. You should listen to his stuff, though. He just mm-hmm. released a vinyl... He always releases vinyl with his projects now. So I love artists that do that. No, high vinyl's quality. a wave. Vinyl's a wave yeah. for sure. He yeah. just had a feature on a tape uh, on Eloquence tape. Eloquence is real big and like, I don't know, lo fi, but like boom bap and mm. that type of stuff no, right I now. I know that. Um, for example, it's Blue. For that. Blue and Exile, but Blue. Uh, Blue B L U has been working with uh, okay, yeah, yeah. working with them in like that circle every now and then for a while. But whatever. Mm-hmm. Brain Orchestra it might use my artwork. That's tight. Hell yeah, hell. It's yeah. a big. That's a big thing. And then last thing. So last thing I'm gonna plug. I'm gonna say two more things because I'm gonna say fitting the grid, March 14th, Harvard Square. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Eight you to eleven about PM. That, right. <laughs> Don't forget about that. That's literally that means the world to me. So anybody who shows up to that, you're instant like mm. a one like homie. That. You know. Uh, and then uh, last thing, I got my podcast, the Deep Sound Podcast is uh i'm gonna start releasing new episodes again i had three not trial episodes but three initial episodes mm-hmm. to launch it the next episode i got coming up is real special um Hell yeah. i'm gonna release a teaser for it tomorrow but it's real special I'll, i i'm gonna try to hook you up with the, this guest too because maybe he'll want to do this podcast oh yeah man for but, sure uh, yeah for uh, sure. we got a lot of artists that hit me up but we'll find a yeah. way to <laughs> find be, get them on. <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah yeah there's a lot oh, of yeah. a lot of people oh, yeah. no in one, time so. Oop, yeah. in, in time. time no definitely in time, in time. Yeah, the people know, that are sure. waiting you can always send them to me you exactly. know exactly <laughs> no, I, I, honestly yeah, well i <laughs> might start doing that you I'm know honestly kidding. i'm just kidding no 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 that's change man you want you want me to send some people your way i got you there's plenty yeah plenty yeah but yeah I'm not going to tease it yet just because it hasn't been recorded yet. It's mm. going to be recorded tomorrow, and I don't know how it's going to go. What if he's like, you know, I don't want this out. Facts, but I'm just going to yeah. say big podca- podcast relaunch. Uh, it's the Deep Sound Podcast. You can find it, again, on my website, nodepthcollective.com. Mm-hmm. No spaces or anything. Uh, or you can find it on Live 365's platform. They mm-hmm. have an app. They have a website. They have everything. But you can find it on my website, their website. It's the Deep Sound Podcast. It's hosted by me, Intuition, features a lot of great people, yeah. that type of stuff. Different than Amir's podcast, but still, still I don't a know. vibe. I still, still a vibe, vibe. still dope. You know, what I I'm try. Saying? You know, still I'm, good. I'm trying, yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah again yeah. about the time thing. I'm making more time for that, so that's that's more that's important to me than like more important to me than some up- upcoming releases of my own. You know, mm-hmm. like Clyde Andromeda, March 14th, fit in the grid podcast. Damn, I, lo- I lose track sometimes, Everything. too, Yeah, man. that's what I'm saying, man. So much <laughs> shit, bro. Like, I got my music and the podcast, and I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to do nothing else, yo. It's day to day, I thought man. I'm t- I mean, even, I, don't, I don't even consider myself a beat maker like that. Like, I could I could throw in a producer, but, like, I, I mean, that's part of the music, but, like, you know. It changes day to day. Bro. Sometimes I wear different hats, you know what I mean? It, it's like. It's the way to be, though, in 2020. You got to wear multiple hats, especially if you're on your, your, um, uh, you know, entrepreneur bag, you know, you yeah. got to wear multiple hats. I'm just trying to it make is. it, man. I'm Period. just trying to make yeah, it. Yeah, we're just trying to make it out here. And the way to make it is to do multiple things. Yeah. You can't be a one-trick <laughs> pony. You can't be a one-trick pony yeah. and make it. It's as simple as that. You look at anybody, they 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 know how to do multiple things, even if they're not showing you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Wanna... I don't want to cook food for people anymore. Yeah, you know <laughs> that's I mean? yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we all want to kick the, the, the full-time jobs we got into to, and to make it happen. Um. You know, and there's always and there's so many different ways to go about it, but you always gotta stay determined. You gotta stay determined because a negative mindset can can ruin everything. That ruins Thanks. every like like people have survived diseases, have survived things that should have taken them out. Like just, it's a bunch of things are just yeah. because of a you know because of a negative mindset. But if you have that positive mindset, you can survive things. You know, you can really yeah. get through. So yeah, yeah, it's that's. I and I feel agree. like with you, man, you 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 just you just keep it rolling, you know, keep it going, man. Try yeah. my best, man. Definitely, you know. Man. It's it's okay to crack sometimes, but you gotta keep you gotta keep it together, you know. Yeah, keep it moving, bro. Keep yeah. it moving, and keep um, moving. we're gonna end it on that note. Yeah, keep that's great. Moving, that's y'all. very positive. Keep it moving, all right? And have Peace. that intuition. With intuition in the building, you see what I did there? Oh yes, sir. snap! Oh, oh! <laughs> I no, think that was even like not creative at all. Oh, that's good, <laughs> it's all man. It was right there for me. Intuition in the good, building because this is your place. Thank you for being a guest, man. Surprised we didn't do this sooner, but hey. 
Hey, Better man. late than never, you know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, man, I'd rather, ha- I'd rather, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd rather have it happen than not happen, you know? And it would have been it's, too predictable if it was fun. the first episode, you know what I mean? Amir is going <laughs> to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it if it was the first episode like, back, you're like, this is the new spot I'm recording at, and, and this is, yeah, is yeah, the person yeah, yeah, who have been too. Yeah, 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 so uh, yeah. no, you're going to be a guest on mine soon. Yeah, man, whenever the time is right. It's always a time and place, you know what I mean? So, yeah, whenever you're at. We'll give it a couple weeks when you got free time, too. Yeah, yeah, we'll let it cook up, yeah, we'll let this cook, you know? <laughs> we'll wait but yeah no, for sure man hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah but All yeah right. that's that's it y'all episode 61 thanks for thank having y'all me. for tuning in i'm happy to have you on this one man it's yeah. a really dope one for real very for real. important yeah no, definitely we had some we had some we had some things there you know what i'm saying we were shooting we were shooting we were getting in it it's like <laughs> the tangents were good the good tangents yeah. <laughs> hell yeah tune in y'all for the next one all right peace